Welcome to another exciting episode of Beast of Pilosis, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. In this video, I'm going to talk poetically about my favorite bone, the mysterious septomaxilla. Now, before you go looking for your own septomaxilla, let me explain that we humans, we, we don't possess this bone. It's found only in a handful of mammals, and some of our distant relatives, such as the primitive lizard Sphenodon. Now, as the name suggests, the septomaxilla is a paired bone found near the maxilla, and in many animals that have them, the bone splits the nasal passages, so it is a, a bone that's up the nose. In the sail back Pelicosaurus dimetrodon from the Permian period before the age of dinosaurs, the septomaxilla was a rather small bone located in the nasal opening. It features a foramen, a hole, between the bone and the articulation with the maxilla bone behind it. In the primitive mammal-like therapsid reptiles such as Lycodiodon, the septomaxilla is a small bone that rings the outer edge of the nasal opening, the nares, but points all the way backward on the skull, providing a longer contact between the nasal bone above and the maxilla bone behind. In the early Triassic, the therapsid mammal-like reptile, Thoraxodon, the septomaxilla is a fairly prominent bone of the nose, still retaining a foramen, which opens into a long canal. This septomaxilla canal in life likely provided a path for nerves, arteries, and veins directed toward the very sensitive nose. Thus, the septomaxilla likely functioned as a bony support for a sensitive organ of smell for early mammals. During the Jurassic period, most mammals retained a septomaxilla wedged between the nasal and maxillary bones and seated above the premaxillary bone, which held the anterior incisor teeth. However, the foramen opening was reduced and in many groups completely absent. The Jurassic period is the, the middle period of time in the Mesozoic era when dinosaurs ruled. However, it was also an important time for mammals. The great split occurred among mammals between a diverse group of primitive mammals, including the egg-laying monotremes, and the therian mammals, including marsupial and placental mammals. The oldest known true mammal, Morgaducodon, from the early Jurassic is not preserved well enough to rule out whether the fossil had a septomaxilla or not. Some suggest it was present. In the best preserved specimens, it looks like an explosion happened in the nose. Are any of these shards a piece of the septomaxilla? In the Jurassic mammal, Docodon, from the Morrison Formation, there appears to be a place for a septomaxilla. But again, it's not preserved, so it may have actually lacked a septomaxilla. A tiny septomaxilla was reported in the late Jurassic mammal Shushu, appearing as a small fragmentary bone near the nasal opening. Shushu is a primitive allotherian, a group that includes multi-tuberculates. A close relative, Pseudoopterodon, from the late Jurassic, has also been reported to have a septomaxilla. All of the Otherian mammals, including well-preserved skulls of multi-tuberculates from the Cretaceous period, lack a septomaxilla. The presence of a septomaxilla in these two genera uh, from the late Jurassic is viewed with some skepticism, as they could also be a uh, broken premaxillary bone. However, there are a couple Mesozoic mammals that clearly show a septomaxilla. The early Cretaceous Repenia mammus is a lar has a large septomaxilla positioned in a similar way as an early therapsid mammal-like reptiles in a junction with the maxillary and premaxillary bones. The tiny early Jurassic hydrocodium has a septomaxilla on the posterior edge of the nasal opening, the nares, much like you see in Dimetrodon, although the skull of hydrocodium is really, really, really tiny compared to Dimetrodon, which is much bigger. The early Cretaceous mammal Vince Alestes has a septomaxilla, much like Repanomanus, and the early Jurassic Synconodon from China also has a septomaxilla and even retains a small foramen. The early Eutherian Acristotherium from the early Cretaceous of China 
has a tiny sliver of a septum maxilla right near the edge of the nose. However, a similar age Eutherian Eomaya from the early Cretaceous of China does not appear to have a septum maxilla. Thus, in many mammals, it appears that the septum maxilla was no longer a very common bone as it was likely lost in many lineages during the Cretaceous, as it's not been widely reported in fossil mammals. The only record of a septomaxilla in a late Cretaceous mammal is the oddball Gondwana fear from Madagascar. The single known skull from the group demonstrates a large septomaxilla that extends between the nasals and the premaxilla and actually contacts the lacrimal bone. This strange configuration is unlike any known mammal, living or fossil. In the Cenozoic, the Septomaxilla hung on with the monotremes. The fossil tooth platypus, Obduriodon, from the Miocene of Australia has a Septomaxilla, as well as the living platypus, Ornithorhynchus. Rhynchus. The septomaxilla in both living and fossil platypuses forms a major part of the bony underframe of the bill in duck-billed platypuses. If we examine the skulls of the other group of monotremes, Tachyoglossus and Zagalostus, or the spiny anteaters, Echidnas, they fuse the septomaxilla with the premaxilla. In juveniles and a study of embryos of echidnas, the septomaxilla can be seen as a separate ossification center, indicating that it fuses in adulthood with the premaxillary bones. There is only one other group of modern mammals that have a septomaxilla bone, and that is the xenarthens, which includes sloths, armadillos, and tamadua, the South American anteaters, all of which appear to retain a septomaxilla. In armadillos, the septomaxilla is a tiny bone that sits on the back of the nostril opening and provides a septum within the anterior part of the nasal passage. There's debate over whether the septomaxilla bones found in the armadillo and sloth noses are the same bone found in platypus beaks and weird Mesozoic mammals and early reptile-like mammals. Its presence is an enigma and it may have arose independently. However, the presence of the septomaxilla does support that xenarthrins were the first group of eutherian mammals to branch off from other mammalian groups. Well, thanks for listening to me wax poetically about my favorite bone, the septomaxilla. I've listed references in the papers about the septomaxilla in the description to this video if you'd like to learn more about this remarkable bone.